Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Uh, today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. And you can support the show on a one-time basis using the Zell app to box13 at greatdetectives.net. And I want to thank Vivian for supporting the show in that way. You can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of The Man Called X. The original air date, May 18th, 1951, and the title is Enough Intrigue to Fill a Book. Now we present Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X, the Friday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Transcribed for you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. By Canon Towels, famous for color, for design, for durability. Among towels, America's number one best seller. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance in all of the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. No matter what you now take for headache relief, we urge you to try Anison for the incredibly fast relief these tablets bring the next time you're suffering from a headache. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So the next time a headache strikes, take Anison for this wonderfully fast relief. Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison at any drug counter in handy boxes of 12 and 30. Economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. Prince Haiti, like many cities of the world, is a mixture in sharp contrast of the old and the new. An up-to-date airport serves its commerce, and modern business buildings line its streets. But deep in the jungle, and even in the plantations outside the city, the drums of voodoo still sound their pagan rhythms in the night. And again, the well-dressed man who steps from a limousine at the entrance of the government building is a product of the new. But the thing that awaits him is as old as terror itself. Call for me here at three, Ronaldo. Good morning, Your Excellency. Oh, good morning, Dr. Weimar. Lovely day, isn't it? Yes, it is a perfect day. Uh, tell me, sir, have you... Look out, Your Excellency. Huh? Zombie? No, wait. I... No, no. Oh! Hey, get out of here. Let me through here. Excellency. Let me through. Your Excellency, I... Why, you filthy... <laughs> Your shooting was not very well timed, Captain Andre. Eh? Uh, what do you mean, Dr. Weimar? I mean, perhaps it should have been ten seconds sooner, or else not at all. Five assassinations in three weeks, and every one of the victims a government official. I just phoned the Haitian consul a few minutes ago, Chief. Says the whole island's in a turmoil down there. Well, what gets me, Ken, is this business about zombies, the walking dead. Why, it's right out of a dime novel. It's ridiculous. All right, Chief, you don't believe in zombies, and I don't. But a lot of the natives in Haiti do, and that's the point. 
Oh, I know there's still plenty of superstition left in the world, but this whole thing just doesn't make sense. I've seen it done before in Ceylon, the Sudan, India. It's a matter of hypnotism and drugs. It creates a perfect assassin with no thought for his own safety and only one idea in mind, to kill. But why? Assuming somebody is doing this in Haiti, why? Well, all the victims have been government officials. It looks like an attack on the government itself. Yeah. And the little hot spots have a habit of turning into big ones. Sure. Serbia, Spain. All right, Ken. Go to it. Somebody stands to profit by this. The problem is to find out who. And the answer? Well, I guess I better look for it in Haiti. So long, Chief. Are you Mr. Ken Thurston? Why, oh, yes, that's right. Captain Andreas at your service, sir. Oh, how do you do? I've been assigned to escort you to General Brock. General Brock? The general commands the Department of Police and Military Affairs. Oh, yes. Tell me, have there been any new developments? No, sir. Not since His Excellency the Finance Minister was killed in front of the government building two days ago. As I understand it, there hasn't been one of these zombies captured alive. That is correct. They're like mad dogs. One cannot take chances. Oh, it might be worth taking a chance to be able to question one of them. Well, so far there's been really no opportunity to capture one of them. I see. These affairs happen so fast that... that What is it, Captain? This man coming towards us is a special investigator hired by the consul in New York. A terrible nuisance, really. Permit me to introduce myself, sir. I am Jose Cacahuate. My car. South American agent for North American van lines. Hmm. From Tucumcari to Tallahassee, Chattanooga to Cucamonga, we haul anything, anywhere, anywhere. All right, Pagan, take off that phony beard and come up for air. I can't take it off. I'm in the Secret Service. Well, that's one branch of government you should, you should know all about. You've been running for them for several years. Mr. Thurston, that's my bread and butter you're stepping on. What are you doing down here, anyway? Why, I'm investigating this zombie business, whatever that is. Oh, sure. Oh, well, now, Captain my Andres, theory... do you happen to have any ideas as to what may be behind this mess? Well, nothing definite, Mr. Thurston. There is a general feeling that the plantation owners may be responsible in some way. The plantation owners? Why? Well, they've had very little voice in the government in recent years. Control has been in the hands of city politicians, so and naturally... And did you become a political commentator, my pet? Mala. What? Mala, this is Ken Thurston, Miss Bussard. How do you do? And Mr. Zell Schmidt, you know, of course. Sure. Hiya, babe. Oh, you horrid little man. Andres, I'm terribly sorry to break in on you this way, but I did want to remind you about dinner this evening. Well, I'm not sure, Mala. General Brock has assigned me as liaison to Mr. Thurston. Well, then by I... all means, bring Mr. Thurston, too. You oh. will come, won't you? Well, I... Oh, please. If you like Creole cooking, you'll love Haitian food. All right. You found my weak spot. Good. Andres will bring you out, Mr. Thurston, and I'll look forward to showing you around my plantation. I don't mind confessing that it's a relief to have you here, Mr. Thurston. I'm a man of action myself, and the mystery leaves me floundering. Well, this is all a mystery to me so far, General Brock. Possibly these case records may help a little. Well, I hope so, I hope so, but they don't make sense to me. Five men in a row struck down on the streets without any rhyme or reason to it. Oh, I think there's a rhyme and a reason. A matter of finding them. Well, I hope that happens soon, sir. One more murder will mean martial law, and then the whole business will be dumped right on my shoulders. Yes, I see what you mean. General Brock, have you considered the possibility that one of your own men may be involved in this? Oh, 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 that's ridiculous, sir. Police and army are absolutely trustworthy. I know, that's the usual theory, but... I can vouch for them to a man, sir. Something else, General. This idea of the plantation owners being responsible, is that a possibility? Well, possibility in theory, I suppose, but not in fact. Why, some of them are my best friends. Fine people, all of them. I see. Well, I'll look over these records and talk with you later. Well, I dare say we'll find time tonight at dinner. You're coming to Miss Boussard's too? Yes, yes. Fine girl, Mala. Wonderful person. Wonderful. Well, good luck, Mr. Thurston. Call on me if you need any help, sir. Thanks, General. I will. Hey, over here, Mr. Thurston. Well, secret agent Zellschmidt. Still wearing the beard, I see. I need the money, Mr. X. How did I know what I was getting into? When I heard they were having trouble with zombies, I thought somebody was watering the liquor. Well, what do you think now? I think I'm scared. Good reason to be, too. 
chance of being turned into a zombie at any moment. Oh, don't say that. A glassy-eyed, mindless idiot with no intellect or... Hmm, come to think of it, I guess you're safe at that. Mr. Thurston, I... Pagan, what's the tie-up between Malabusa and Captain Andreas? Well, who knows, except he, he follows her around like a moonstruck cat. A lucky dog. She wraps him around her little finger. Why, Mr. Thurston, she's practically got him hypnotized. <laughs> This is my only guest whom you haven't met. Mr. Thurston, Dr. Weimar. Oh, Doctor. I knew a Dr. Weimar in Vienna before the war. Carl, I think his name was. My brother, Mr. Thurston. He is uh, no longer living. Oh, I'm sorry. Psychiatrist, wasn't he? Yes, with a specialty in hypnotherapy. Oh, your field too, Dr. Weimar? It was, originally. My practice here, however, is primarily medical. I see. Listen, everyone. It's such a lovely night that I decided we'd have dinner on the veranda. Oh, wonderful. Oh, very good. Wonderful. Wonderful. We'll go out through the side doors there. General Brock. Yes, my dear. Would you and Andres like to leave your firearms in here? Oh? I'm not really so dangerous that you have to be armed. Oh, on the contrary, my dear. You're so completely dangerous that mere firearms wouldn't do us the least bit of good. Oh, please, General Brock. <laughs> this way, Mr. Thurston. Thanks. Ah, you're right. It is lovely out here. I wouldn't trade it for all the rest of... Well, what's the matter, Mr. Thurston? Nothing. I was just listening to the drums. Oh, yes. Voodoo drums or signal drums. Opinions vary. Zimala, you excuse me? Oh, yes, Granaloo. Is approval with you if me go now? Of course, Granaloo. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Miss Zimala. She's been with me for years. Devoted. A wonderful woman. But where's she going? Oh, she has a little house of her own in the bush. Oh. Holds voodoo ceremonies in it, I'm quite certain. A lot of natives still believe in it, you know. As they do in zombieism. Yes. So shall we sit down? Uh, you on my right, Mr. Thurston. Thank you. Andres there. Well, thank you. And you on the other side, General Brock. Uh, thank you, my dear. Dr. Weimar, over here. Uh, by wait. The... Look. Why... Yes. But what the devil? His eyes, grassy, fixed. It's a zombie. Now, then, get back. If I can hold his attention, swing this chair. Inside, Captain Andres. Get our gun. Just one swing now and... Good timing, Mr. Thurston. He's knocked unconscious. Stand back, everybody. Where is he? Where did he go? No, Captain. Put down that gun. No, don't. Oh, Andres. Why? There was no need of that, Captain. The man was unconscious. It wasn't a man. It was a zombie. You can't take chances. You... Well... You were a little hasty, though, weren't you? You have to kill zombies. It's the only way to... The only way it's to... It's all right, Andres. You come in the house with me now. Oh. You did the right thing, my dear. You were right, of course, Mr. Thurston. The boy was hasty, but... Confound it, you don't understand the pressure all of us are under out here. Maybe not, General Brock. But I don't understand why you never captured one alive. Well, yes, I know, but... Oh, confound it, I, I'd better go see what's eating the ball. Mr. Thurston, am I correct in assuming that you noticed the same thing I did? I saw something, Dr. Weimar. Fantastic, though. Is it? Good night, Mr. Thurston. Good night, Doctor. All right, Pega. You can come out from under that table now. Well, I, I'm only hired to investigate these zombies, Mr. Thurston, not to fight with them. Well, so that's what they look like, eh? Some of them. The other one here tonight looked different, though. Other one? Sure. Captain Andres. Huh? Didn't you notice him when he ran out here and shot this man? He had the eyes of a zombie. We will continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. Now for some news of a special event. News that deserves and gets a fanfare. Now, right now, is the time to get famous Canon towels. Big Canon towel sales are booming all over town. They're packed with value. Don't wait. 
Get to your store today and get in on these great money-saving Canon sales. Canon towels give you the most for your money. Canon towels absorb more, wear longer, stay lovely longer. You'll need more towels for summer. Get famous Canons now. The big, fluffy, thirsty towel in every size. Bath towels, hand towels, and washcloths to match. Complete ensembles. Eighteen beautiful colors to choose from. More people buy Canon towels than all other towels combined. Get the most for your money. Get Canons. Get them now, right now, in the big, 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 value-packed Canon towel sales. And now to continue with The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. Five assassinations in three weeks, and the island of Haiti is swept by a wave of terror. One word is whispered over and over on the plantations and through the dark hills. Zombies, the walking dead. Ken himself was an eyewitness to killing number six. And now he and Pagan make their way cautiously through the midnight bush, heading for the hut of a voodoo oracle, old Granaloo. What do you want with this Granaloo woman, anyhow? Just checking. That zombie came out of the bush about a minute after she went into it. And she may be a voodoo leader. She's devoted to... Wait a second. Huh? There she is in front of the hut. Jeepers, creepers. Let's get out of here, Mr. Thurston. Please come on up here where I can see you. Oh, it's too late. Come on, Pedro. I've been waiting for you, Mr. X. Uh, why, Granaloo? My people out there in the hill, they ask what will be done to save them from this terror. And I have not known what to tell them. And what will you tell them now? That you have come. You knew I would come. And you know who I am. How, Gunnaloo? There is still much knowledge in the jungle that has never yet been found. Have you found the answer? Mr. X? Yes, I found it. But I don't know yet how to deal with it. You will. My people will be very happy when I tell them. I thought there on the veranda that your pigeon English was all put on. One must play many roles in this life, Mr. X. Yes, I know. I will speak to my people now. Good night, Benelou. Come on, Pedro. Wait for me in the car, Pagon. I'm going to stop in at the house. Mr. Thurston, wait. No, no, the gun isn't necessary, Mr. Thurston. I wasn't waiting here to threaten you. The thing is, I'm... Well, I'm scared. Yes, I can understand how you would be, Captain Andreas. You see, tonight is the second time something like that has happened. You mean shooting first and thinking later? It's not like me, Mr. Thurston. I don't understand it. I don't understand it at all. You want to understand it, Captain? Yes, no matter what the answer is, no matter what I... I've got to find out. All right, listen. Come with me now and don't say anything to anyone. Stay at my hotel tonight. And in the morning we'll go see Dr. Weimar together. I I don't trust Weimar. You don't have to trust him. Trust me. Uh, uh, uh. He's rather far under the drug now, Mr. Thurston. Uh-huh. And the trance, too, is about as deep as I care to take him just now. Well, it's entirely up to your judgment, Dr. Weimar. I'm a little... Well, it's a little out of my field here. Then I think we might try for some of the phrases, some of the commands that were given him when he was hypnotized previously. Do you agree, Mr. Thurston? Yeah, go ahead, Doctor. Captain Andres, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. And do you understand who's here with you and what's happening? Yes, sir. Your Dr. Weimar, Mr. Thurston, is here and you've hypnotized me. A part of me is asleep, a part of me is awake and listening to you. You called it... Uh, uh... Dissociation. Yes, sir. Now, the awake part of you, Captain Andres, is the part I'm talking to. It's the part that remembers. Remembers everything. Including the last time you were hypnotized. Yes, sir. I remember. What were you told at that time, Captain? I was... 
I was told to kill zombies, take no chances. How were you told? What were the words? You can hear the command now. What is it, Captain? Uh... What is it? Kill all zombies after they've killed... Kill all captured zombies. Forget you were told this. It's Forget almost as though a woman were talking. You Forget. can't always be sure, Mr. Forget. Thurston. I can't remember anything. He has been given a lot of commands to forget. Forget. It's going to take quite a lot of work to get it out of him. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to leave him in your hands, Dr. Weimar. I've got an appointment with General Brock. Those case records then, Mr. Thurston, no use to you at all, so it seems, sir. Huh? Well, not much anyway, General Brock. No. Oh, I've got a few hazy ideas, but nothing really worth mentioning. Yeah, that's too bad, too bad. I've managed to stall off martial law until tomorrow morning. That's about as far as I'll be able to push it, however. Well, that still gives me some time. Time. That's the enemy I've fought all my life. Action's the thing. Which accounts, I imagine, for all these trophies on the walls. Eh? Huh? Oh, oh, the animal head, yes. Collected in Central Africa over a good many years. Nothing any fool couldn't do. But, uh, here is a trophy for you, Mr. Thurston. Oh, yes. What is it? Polished quartz? No, it's rutile. Beautiful job of cutting, isn't it? I attached it to this watch chain so I could swing it. Like a pendulum. Watch it glitter. Glitter this way. Back and forth. Back and forth. Notice the fire in it, Mr. Thurston? The play of lights deep inside the stone? Yes, it's fascinating. I could watch it for hours. Glittering. Scintillating. Shifting. Changing. Patterns of light as it swings. Back and forth. Back. And forth. Yeah. Yes, I see. Makes me drowsy sometimes. Sleepy. My eyes get heavy. Like yours are now. Yes. Heavier and heavier. Sleepier and sleepier. So sleepy you can't open them. Sleep. Sleep. And now you're sound asleep. Yes. Sound asleep. You can't open your eyes, Mr. Thurston. You're sound asleep. I'm sound asleep. Asleep. Good. Mr. Thurston, you're a fool. Yes. I'm a fool. Hypnotism is such a simple art. You ought to learn more about it. Now, I'm going to give you some orders, Thurston. Commands. And then I'm going to wake you up. You won't remember being hypnotized. You'll forget all about this. But when the time comes, you'll carry out the commands. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. All right. Now, listen. I'm having a little dinner party at my residence this evening. The same group that was out at Mallard's last night. And during this dinner, at my signal, you're going to draw your gun and kill Dr. Weimar. Do you understand? At your signal, I'm to kill Dr. Weimar. And here is the signal. I'll say, doesn't it seem a little hot in here? The signal, you'll say, doesn't it seem a little hot in here? Good. Now I'm going to wake you up, Thurston. At the count of three, you'll be wide awake, and you won't remember any of this. Understand? Yes, sir. All right, then. One, two, three. Ah. Natives of that particular area polished the stones by some method all their own. I never could discover how they did it. That's very interesting, General. Well, I guess I'd better get back to work. Oh, by the way, Mr. Thurston... I'm having a little dinner party here at my place this evening. like to have you join us. Fine. What time? Oh, let's make it eight o'clock. All right, General. I'll see you at eight. Yes, yes. Mr. Thurston, I swore before... 
before I came here tonight that I keep the dinner conversation off that subject. And here we go again, talking about what? Zombies, naturally. Uh, would somebody please pass the salt? Well, it's a little hard to ignore a subject that's caused six deaths in a row. What have you found out, Mr. Thurston? Any results yet? Well, it depends on what you mean by results, Captain Andres. None, at least, that have led to what General Brock would call action. Well, unfortunately, I'm being forced into action. Martial law goes into effect at 8 o'clock tomorrow. Orders of the cabinet. It's the old familiar pattern, and a bad one. Armed guards everywhere, a curfew, law courts closed. Bulletins, orders, and force. Yes, it's an ugly picture, Dr. Weimar, for most people. For most people? I'd say for everybody concerned. Not necessarily, Marla. I came down here with one idea in mind. To look for the person most likely to profit from this zombie terror. Well, I found that person pretty quickly. It wasn't really much of a problem. <clears throat> I, I say, doesn't it seem a little hot in here? The problem was... Deciding how to deal with the situation. Mr. Thurston, doesn't it seem a little hot in here? Not to me, General Brock. But what I said was... Doesn't... I know what you said. I also know a few things about hypnotism. Ooh, uh... Enough at least not to fix my attention on a shiny pendulum. All right, Captain Andres. General Brock, I have here a presidential warrant authorizing your arrest. But Captain Andres, I bet. Look! Thurston is a zombie. Your gun, please. Look, don't you understand? Thurston is a zombie. Yes, no, you, you. Listen, General Brock. Dr. Weimar worked on the captain for five hours today. Your number one mop-up zombie is unzombified. Hold right. on. This way, right. General. March. Right. All right. This way. Out. Dictatorship by way of martial law. Was that his idea, Mr. Thurston? Of course, Mallow. It's an easier way than revolution. Oh. Well, one thing at least... There won't be any more of those zombies now. No, maybe not the kind he was creating. But there are other kinds. They're fighting and killing and dying all over the world. Millions of them. Mindless and blind, they... They follow just one command. Kill, destroy, kill. And yet who's really to blame? The zombies themselves? Or the men who create them? Our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall, will return in just a moment. Here's a word from RCA Victor. That word is Fairfield. And RCA Victor's superb new Fairfield is the last word in console television. It's better looking in every way. Better looking television. RCA Victor television that has been quality proven in over two million homes. It's 17-inch television with clear, bright pictures. Steady pictures that are locked in place by RCA Victor's exclusive eyewitness picture synchronizer. Better-looking cabinet, too, for in the Fairfield, RCA Victor stylists have captured all the charm and dignity of the classic design. Every line, every detail of this fine furniture piece exhibits the craftsmanship for which RCA Victor is famous. And its beautifully figured doors can play such an important part when the set is not in use. Yes, the Fairfield is better-looking in every way. So next chance you get, step into your RCA Victor dealers. See and hear the exciting new Fairfield. You, too, will discover that the RCA Victor Fairfield is better looking in every way. Now, here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. The folks you heard in tonight's cast were Barbara Fuller, D.J. Thompson, Will Wright, Lou Merrill, Stan Waxman, and Bill Conrad. Next week... A man and a girl and a plot that sent Kane halfway around the world on one of the most exasperating cases he ever tackled. And speaking of exasperation, of course, Leon Belaska will be there as Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> The Man Called X is the Friday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Transcribed for you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. By Canon Towels, famous for color, for design, for durability. Among towels, America's number one best seller. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. 
The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to hear The Magnificent Montague with Monty Woolley, formerly heard on Friday, now brought to you as the Saturday night feature of NBC's All-Star Festival. And until next week, same time and station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. William Bendix stars in The Life of Riley. Enjoy it on NBC. Welcome back. Well, did anyone expect we would get to a zombie story before we finished with The Man Called X? Uh, certainly an interesting tale. Hypnotism can be overused in a lot of uh, stories, but I think it actually works here. It does work, I think, as a solution for why all the zombies ended up uh, getting killed. And you don't even run into that old hypnotic rule about, you know, not doing something that you uh, have a moral compunction against doing, because this guy you know, would kill to protect other people. And certainly these uh, zombies uh, were, he was hypnotized to view them as a threat. Of course, our villain is undone by the way he tries to capture the, uh, the man called X. And if the hypnotism had worked, it would have been so cheesy. But, you know, the man called X is just like, yeah, that's not going to work. You know, I may not be, like, the world's greatest expert in hypnotism, but I'm kind of not going to sit there and stare at and watch the watch when I'm on a case involving hypnotism. Of course, in a visual medium, you know, this would be a very challenging acting job because he would have to uh, be convincing to the audience, but also not so convincing that uh, the audience feels like they were cheated uh, when he pretended to be hypnotized. It's probably one of those performances where it is so much better to do it on uh, radio. Now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day, and thank you so much to Tad. Tad has been one of our Patreon supporters since December 2019, currently supporting the show at the uh, shameless level of $4 or more per month. Again, thanks so much for your support, Tad. And uh, that'll do it today. If you do enjoy this podcast, please be sure to rate and review it wherever you download your podcast from. We'll be back next week with another episode of The Man Called X. But join us back here tomorrow for Philo Vance, where... You know, I was just thinking, Colonel Tim. Yep? If I get a few more little people to work with you in the act, it might be better entertainment. Whatever you say, Mr. Edwards. Say, I know someone who might do. A young lady. A lady, Midget? How tall is she, Tim? Oh, about my size, 33 inches. Uh Uh-huh, that's not bad. We could bill you two as the smallest Mr. and Mrs. in the world. Sure. I'll think it over. But right now, let's get on with our rehearsal. Okay. Take a song from the middle. I'll give you a pickup. Here. You've seen our literal village, and I guess you all have learned that it really is a small world as far as we're concerned. I've taken you through shiny town, my eeny, meeny, miny town. Now we say to tiny town, goodbye. Ah, that's swell, Colonel Tim. (laughs) Billy Edwards and Company. I like the sound of that. You, La Belle Louise and her trapeze, Andy Anderson, the human giant, and Duke Miller and his magic. Not bad, not bad. Sounds good to me. Think of it, Tim. Two more weeks of rehearsal and six months in theater's book solid. If all goes well, we could go on the road two weeks from Tuesday. Yes, Mr. Edwards. But that is, if all goes well. <laughs> Homicide Department, Sergeant Heath speaking. Sergeant Heath, this is Jennings. I'm the janitor of the rehearsal building on Kearney Street. Hurry over, please, Sergeant. Please come right away. Okay, Jennings, take it easy. Tell me what happened. A man's been shot, and he's lying on the floor of one of the rooms. Hurry, Sergeant, hurry. Be right there. You, you know the man's name? Edwards. Billy Edwards. Hurry, please hurry. Don't touch anything, and don't leave till I get there. Be up in five minutes. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. 
Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. Check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.